Okay, so I'm getting the feeling that the comment section for this week's episode is probably going to be a little crazy, but if at all possible, could we not let get off hand? I know that's kind of a physical impossibility with a YouTube comment section, but just thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> this week's episode opened with Hana seemingly getting ready for next season. Don't worry, we'll cover that at the end of the video. No, but actually, she was trying to design an outfit for Henri's upcoming figure skating competition that he and Homari were headlining. From there, the usual P played, but with a minor alteration. Well, thanks for the spoilers, guys. Also, seriously, animators, you took out Bishim for the sake of this special sequence, even though he's still part of Karayasu, and yet you still kept those two butler guys no one remembers. Anyway, after that spoilerific OP, we cut over to Henri rejecting Kai's costume design because... Good call! Not as though that was going to stop what was coming up, oh boy. Following this, some of his fangirls tried to present him with flowers in commemoration of his upcoming performance, but Basato quickly intervened. Got a protected husband, am I right? Again, please go easy in the comment section. Later, while practicing his routine, Homari had been noticing something was a little bit off about his performance as of late. As it turned out, this competition would likely become his last performance, as he'd already gone through several minor surgeries just to maintain his current compromised level of performance. Would have been nice if we had actually gotten some actual build up to this, like offhandedly seeing Henri leave the hospital with no explanation, but really, that's this season in a nutshell, isn't it? Meanwhile, Tryasu, the procedure we saw Risto going through in the last episode was completed. As suspected, he had willingly gone through a procedure to essentially reinstate himself back into Tryasu by infusing Toge power directly into his system. The procedure also seemed to result in something else, but more on that later. Right now, I will say, I like this idea of an antagonist who, in spite of being given a way out of his position, chose to stay because he was already too far gone. Elsewhere, Hana was considering new ways to cheer on Henri, and was subsequently greeted by one of the more, unfortunately, underutilized characters of the show. <laughs> Doesn't work quite as well as this. Bad naming sense aside, Charlie provides some surprisingly deep advice from somebody like this stereotypical millennial, basically saying that any little bit of support would help as long as she put her heart into it. Not unlike when Hana brought him back from the edge of despair. This was a good scene. On his way to the competition, Henri got a call from Hawaii likely to discuss him withdrawing, to which he declined the call, and likely raised a very bad death flag. Jeez. Chuck couldn't just keep himself busy this season. This incident seemingly had been recorded in George's book. Now, why would that be unless Henri had some kind of connection with Krasu and yeah, you know where this is going. Henri survived the accident and, in a nice little moment, asked Homari if there had been any other injuries, to which she confirmed there were none. This was likely his attempt at trying to find at least some small bit of relief, as his leg was now and truly beyond repair. Masato and Homari earnestly tried to cheer him up, but really, I think they only had the opposite effect, and they soon left. With his future as a figure skater over, Henri gave in to his despair and was paid a special visit by a certain benefactor. Risto carried Henri, no I'm not going to use that clip twice in a row, to the figure skating ring. There, all of Henri's fans, after likely hearing about the accident, were left disappointed and depressed over the news. Using this, plus Henri's own despair over the situation, Risto created a Moshimaida out of the very flowers his fans tried to pass on to him. The Precure transformed and tried to engage Henri, who had become the main controller of the Moshimaida. During this fight, Risto seemed to not recognize Harry, implying he had also wiped his memory clean just so that the Precure wouldn't have something to purify next time. Back to the fight at hand, while her teammates held off the Moshimaida, Han tried to get through to Henri. She acknowledged that while Henri tried to maintain a strong facade, she knew he was shouldering the expectations of all of his fans, and it must have been very difficult. But just because one dream was over, it didn't mean it was the end of the line. Realizing that his real dream was to bring smiles to all of his fans, and that he was now doing the exact opposite, Henri decided he wanted to resign from his current position, giving him by far the shortest tenure in Karasu, and makes me wonder what the hell was the point of that special opening sequence. 
Using the combined force of their miracle braces, the Precure managed to bust Henri out, which also led to a certain side effect. I think I hear the sound of many a Care Waffle fan laying out a very frustrated. <sighs> I mean, to be fair, this form wasn't really that much different than Julio's white form, as neither one of these characters got an actual transformation trinket out of the deal, and it was only a brief power-up. Henri just happened to take the initiative and named himself, which is fine and matches with his flashy character, but come on, Cure Waffles was literally served on a plate for you guys. Though really, I'm just waiting on the pointless anime news network article that's going to result from this. God, that site's lost its way recently. Anyway, sorry for the extended digression. Henri stunned the Mole Shimaida long enough for the Precure to deliver their finishing blow. With his one-time deal done, Henri returned to his normal, injured state, left with the knowledge that he at least ended his skating career on the ice. The original three took him back to the hospital, where he took the time to explain how each of their Precure names related to flying. Etoile, which meant star, which don't actually fly, but close enough I guess. Anj, obviously referring to Winged Angels, and Yo, which confused Hana and the English-speaking audience at first, but then he said Eru was also a homonym for wings in French. Uh, Yo, Eru, uh, yeah, this is one of those situations where it only works with the Japanese pronunciation. Anyway, the episode ended with the one character who should have had a little bit more involvement in this week's fight, considering who the victim was, wondering what she wanted to become. Oh boy, I'm not even sure if I really want to do my usual closing statement, knowing that I might upset a few people. But, I will say, for Henri's arc, this was very rushed. Yeah, I know, this has been happening a lot this season, and with the head writer of this show, but I was generally kind of invested in the Henri subplot, so this is especially disappointing for me. I already went over how they could have tackled his developing health issues better, but even then, that wouldn't have fixed the fact that this resolution came way too early. Risto could have easily just have taken Henri and left him at Cross HQ to undergo the same process he went through, and then come back as one of the final obstacles of the season, but nope. But I guess SOMEBODY was too impatient and really wanted to fill that void that Julio left behind last season. Now honestly, while I am a decade member of Team Waffles, I'm also kind of neutral on Henri becoming a Precure. I'm neither all that excited about the idea, but I won't denounce it either. It was a one-off deal, and I'm honestly glad that Henri's leg wasn't fixed at the end, and he still needs to find a new path in life. It's a good message about how sometimes things are simply out of our control and we need to learn how to move on. But again, all that shouldn't distract from how they rushed to the conclusion of Henri's arc. It really is a recurring problem with this season, but again, I'm saving it all for the post-series overview analysis, even though I really want to cover it now. And it is a shame, because there are good moments in this episode. Hana's talk with Charlie, Risto fully submitting to the will of Karasu, Henri's breakdown, ignoring what comes later. Again, in a bubble, a lot of this stuff is great, but much like the now likely retired young figure skater, they didn't stick the landing. Going a little bit into news mode this week, Toy just uploaded a teaser site for their next Precure season. As just a one page site, there's not a whole lot to look at, but it is worth examining at least a little. Obviously, we already know the season is going to be Star Twinkle. And according to this line and this line, it's the 16th series. Hey, good to know. Now, the most interesting line is this one. I'm going to paint this guys, and I'm going to do it with just my imagination. Okay, a few things to unpack with this one. First, the kanji they use for skies, or Sora, is actually the kanji for... SKIES! So, basically our new protagonist wants to draw pictures of outer space, as shown by this hand-drawn background art of our solar system. Is this going to be like Force A, but with a pen switch on all the time? Seriously, why didn't he use that Astro Switch more? Lastly, that imagination line kind of has me concerned because whenever I hear Toy use that word, I always think of two different Sentai that utilized it as a major theme. Akiba Ranger, an excellent self-parody series, and Tokyuger, an 
awful series written by someone who is jealous of the former success and thus wrote a far inferior version of that show where the main characters were a bunch of immature little brats because apparently adults don't have imaginations. So by that logic at the age of 30 I should have zero imagination and shouldn't have been able to make an awesome display for all my toys like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> Also, I got all that information about the writers from Diz Shinta's review of Akiba Ranger. Go check out his channel. The former was written by Naruhisa Arakawa, and the latter was done by Yasuko Kobayashi. And honestly, I hope neither one is attached to this project. Don't get me wrong, I think Arakawa can be a great tokusatsu writer, but as for his anime portfolio... It's... <laughs> <laughs> Mixed to say the least. He's kind of like the reverse Shoji Onomura in that regard, which, while we're on the subject, it looks like he hasn't written for Season 2 of Brains yet, so maybe he's coming back to Precure, perhaps? Because quite frankly, I like this idea of a space and art theme Precure, and Yonimura has shown more than a passing interest in sci-fi, so I think he would be a good fit. Those are just my really early thoughts on the season. What do you guys think? Would you like an art and space themed precure? And who do you think would be a good writer for this season? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And until next time, though. Feral Phenomenon, friends.